Today we're going to be doing the lower control arm in on a 2008 Mitsubishi Lancer GTS. So if you guys are wondering what I wanted to replace was this ball joint, but for the 2008 and up models, this uh, ball joint is integrated into the arm. So we have a new arm right here. That way you guys can see it. So they sell the whole assembly, which is kind of neat, so you'll get brand new uh, bushings for your control arm. And as far as this ball joint, look, uh, I've tried to move it with a lot of force. It doesn't budge, nice and solid. And you can see the difference on this one, super loose. So my symptom was when I was on the freeway going past 60 and I was braking, um, I would get a lot of wheel vibrations, a lot of wheel shimmy, I guess. And at first I thought it was the rotors and I did replace the rotors. But uh, it turns out that that only made the symptom worse because it wasn't the rotors to begin with. So don't just swap out parts, guys. Make sure you lift up your car and you check for play because that's how we found that this uh, ball joint here was worn. And like I said, you can't press it out like in the older cars. It's integrated into the arm. So there's no C-clip up here, right? And this can get, this is like pressed in or welded in. So that's what we're going to be doing today. As far as tools, uh -huh. you could do it with a basic socket set. I mean, it's nice having decent quality tools and a nice big breaker bar, but I've seen guys on YouTube do it with like the worst Harbor Freight tools imaginable and getting a pipe on their little Harbor Freight wrench. So you can do it however, it just it, it depends what you have will either make it a whole day job or maybe a few hours. So on the inside over here for this piece, um, so right here is the other bushing and right where my finger is, the other bushing, the other bolt, which is the other side, um, right where my finger is is where that bolt is, it's just one bolt needs to come out. Um, you can come up here or you could come, I'm going to come down here and take these two little, these two little tabs off and then I'm going to just get the kind of pull on this and get the gun on it. Look at her bolts, see they're not the same size. This long one comes in from this uh, this side, the smaller bushing, and the short one is for this. So we'll keep this together, and that's it. Since we already had uh, everything else out the way, this arm is just gonna pull out. So just for the little wedging and pulling, this should come out. And this is the old arm. And you know, it was, these bushings are old and dry and cracked, so it was, this one's not so bad. But it is about time for that. And like I said, this, and as you guys can see, it's integrated into the arm. So, you're not going to be able to press these out. And that's it, we're going to pop in the new one. So for my first trick, I think the easiest way would be to get this in, and then I'm going to put the bolt through and hold it in with the nut. I'm not going to tighten it down, obviously it's going to be there loose, and then I'll just uh, line this side in. Also side note, I forgot to say, as you guys can see this bolt, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's some red on there, so that's most likely was a thread lock that was on there. So I am gonna put thread lock on these bolts as well. Um, I'm gonna use the blue thread lock. 
I don't know how strong the red one is. I feel like the blue one would be adequate enough. And it's always better to use this than not use anything at all. So this is the medium quality, the blue one. So we're gonna put some of the blue one on here. Show them the thing. Just... Oh, this is the dreadlock blue. So I believe yellow is the uh, lowest, then it's the medium, which is the blue, and then the red is the strongest thread lock. Um, should clean these bolts. Wanna try the rest of shit? How it's long like does that take? 10, 15 minutes. Mm. It works wonders. I tried it on the Ford and got some bolts out. Okay. Nice. Well, this was gonna be a quick job, but we are a little bit picky sometimes, and I do want to take care of the car. Um, it's going on 200,000 miles, and we might need to take this arm out again. Who knows? This might be a race car one day. Um, so we're definitely going to clean up, brush up these threads, get rid of some of that uh, oxidation, a little bit of rust. Overall, these bolts aren't that bad, and it would have it been fine if I put them in. But we're just going to do that, you know? So this is the other side, guys. Same thing. The other one is a little worse. This one, I mean, this is still really bad. Um, I'm also doing my tie rods as you guys can see the boots are torn and there's play and I kind of messed up the threads taking it off you know typical uh, backyard mechanic stuff um, so right now uh, what I'm gonna do is put these into a bath to get rid of some of the oxidation and clean them up make it look nice uh, it's gonna be an e extra 10 minutes so it's totally worth it everything's exactly the same it's just on the other side we're gonna put our hardware into here and we're gonna leave it in a little bath of the rust olum. Um, I've never used this. My brother just recently used this on that truck that has a lot of rust and he says that it worked really well. Um, it has a 30 minutes uh, work time. Um, he's saying about 10 minutes would about, do it. About 10, 15 is good. I just don't forget that it always helps to have a, like a little metal brush yeah. to kind of like weigh off some of the things because um, mm -hmm. the 30 minutes is if you're just going to let it sink, uh, let it sit there and you know, it do all the work. Uh, you only really need about 10, 15 and then you, uh, after that it becomes really soft, little metal brush just wonders and then you're good to go afterwards. So uh, yeah, I mean you could always leave it the full 30 minutes. I would recommend it but in this case we're trying to do the job a little bit faster uh, which is what we're going to do the little metal brush to help speed things along. Completely submerged, right? Yeah, just submerge it. Yeah, so I think that's good. I'll just move it around so we can save some for. Oh, there's another one, so you can. Yeah, but I don't want to be wasteful. So we'll let that sit for 10 minutes. Cool beans. We're going to do the other side while that works. So um, we're going to come back through the magic of YouTube. Alright, it's kind of windy guys, sorry about the wind noise, we're recording with one GoPro and we don't have mics, so this is the quality content you get here, so um, we left these soaking for a while and um, you can see that there's a big difference right away, um, Take them to, the sunlight. to the sunlight, so there's a big difference, there's still a little bit of, of red on some of these because that's the old thread lock, so they had the uh, red one. So I'm only going to use the blue one. I don't think it'll be a big difference. I am, after I drive it around for one or two days, I'm going to jack it back up and make sure nothing's loose and retorque everything down. So, but look, works. So if you guys want to try the rest all them or if you guys just want to clean some bolts in your car, I would recommend it and obviously get the wire brush because um, just to make the job that much better and you can get out any of the crud or debris that's in the bolts. And that's going to help everything go back in smoother and it's going to prevent like your um, bolts or nuts from stripping, you know. Back here again, uh, arms on, none of the bolts are on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bolts on, make sure I thread them in almost all the way, but I'm not going to tighten it because I need to put the rest of the knuckle on. Uh, anytime you guys replace a lower arm like this, um, you want to tighten down the bolts and torque them down when the car is at right height. So right now, this isn't right height because everything would be sagged down. Um, when it's together and the weight of the car is on it, this shock is going to be a little bit more compressed up and this arm is going to be able to go uh, a little higher because um, this uh, stabilizer bar is going to move up with the shock a little. And uh, you want to do that because if you don't, 
your bushings are gonna prematurely give out and it's also gonna be um, damn I don't know the other reason but yeah you're, you're basically gonna prematurely wear your bushings out because they're gonna be overstretched um, and we're gonna go ahead and start and just uh, start putting the bolts on and slap everything on and I guess just so that they understand what exactly you're doing right now I'm just trying to align these holes so um, the arm since the bushings are brand new there's a lot more resistance so it's a lot more force for me to put it on um, and I need to make sure that I line the holes because I don't want to strip the bolts so I have a little screwdriver um, to kind of just put it in the hole and kind of pry and, and move it back without damaging anything um, <laughs> This, you can see our hole is not aligned, so I'm going to just wedge on it with the screwdriver. The hole's aligned, if you didn't see it before, it wasn't aligned. And I just got the screwdriver and I wedged. the holes to align so I can stick the balls in um, so what I ended up having to do was take out the arm again I got a uh, once it, it's in it's kind of hard to take out because like I said the bushings are brand new so everything's like very it's a tighter fit than when they came out so I just uh, got underneath here you know and just pried it off and then the thing I did was just stick in this side so this side wasn't in at all so I just went on this side and I aligned this hole, stuck the bolt through it, put the nut over, and then I shoved this one in. And this one's kind of hard to get in, so I did have to grab the hammer, and I gave it a couple taps to go in. So be careful not to damage your new arm, of course. Uh, I was very gentle with it, we didn't record it, but... Um, and then, since it didn't align that well, I did end up going under and also giving it a little tap to bring it up and the other bolt went, uh, went right in. So that's how we got that in. So we're gonna put the rest of the knuckle on and she's gonna be good to go. So I made a rookie mistake guys and I put in the bolts and I forgot about the thread lock. So I have to now take them out again and put on the thread lock. But it's not a big deal since the holes are already aligned. So. I mean, if you're going to do something, just do it right, even if yeah. you have to backtrack a, a step or two. Uh, fine. Shoving it back in here. I do have my uh, handy dandy electric ratchet. So like I said, we're, we thread it in almost all the way in, but it's not tight because we're going to tighten these two when it's at right height so when everything's on and uh, I'm not gonna lower the car because I won't have room but I'm gonna get the uh, jack under the arm and jack it up to where the car would normally sit and that's how I'm gonna tighten it so I don't uh, prematurely wear out my uh, new bushings. Now I'm gonna put my knuckle on and get my arm in so see how that goes. See, uh, if you can see that the hole on this isn't all the way flush I don't know if the height's different, but yeah, I looked I looked inside the hole. Um, maybe I can get that angle. So. so you see how there's, so here, we have this arm on the outside, right? And the bolt goes like this, right? So it needs that little like gap. This is a bigger bolt, right? This is for the struts. This isn't this one. The other one, you'd see that it fits better, but it needs that gap to go in. And this is kind of acts like a lock as well. Um, since it was too in, this notch was too high, and I brought it down and I looked inside the hole, and then the notch was aligned with the rest of it. So I feel pretty, uh, 
I feel pretty confident. So I'm not, oh look, I have the bolt out. I don't know, I didn't just show you guys, but you see that? Uh, when it's too high, it won't go in, it just won't fit. So, it's good now, it goes in like nothing. Um, I'm confident about it. Um, and uh, it shouldn't be able to come out. Yeah. Oh, we forgot the thread lock again. <laughs> I mean, you're already here. Joke's on me, guys. Uh, I'm going to finish tightening up the caliper uh, mounting brackets, too. I mean, my mounting bolts, my bad. And then I'm going to get the jack on this, jack this up to right height, and then we're going to finish tightening our lower control arm, and that's going to be the full repair. We're live. We got the jack under the control arm. I can also put it right here under the rotor. Um, I actually might do that. Uh, uh, I won't. Um, see how I'm jacking it? You yeah, got it. So I'm jacking it up. See, this is moving up. And I'm moving this. Let's see, right. I'm picturing my tire, guys, so we can go a little higher. good because they were tightened at right height and that is the full repair video if you want to stick around and see me replace these tie rods yeah, that'll be next yeah. we're complete <laughs>